is it visible all of you yes ma'am okay so in last class we saw we ended up by asking like the question how to measure length and we also saw the difference between distance and length okay so now i already told you what si unit means now we'll be talking a little bit of in depth about what si unit is okay now we saw there are two types of errors that is parallax error and zero error so what is zero error let us see what is zero error and how to avoid it we're going to see now okay so if you should know that to avoid zero error first thing the scale should be in contact with the object Secondly, if the scales are not broken or the zero mark is not visible, it will cause zero error. Zero error causes because zero mark when it is not visible. So the correct reading will be obtained by subtracting the value from the full mark. This is all what we discuss. This is small revision, okay? so correct value is equal to subtracting the value from the full mark considered as zero so full mark is zero okay so if we are taking 7 as the reading so 7 minus 0 obviously it is zero okay so if zero scale is not there you cannot take if zero is broken you cannot take the total value as zero okay okay so while measuring the i must be where must the i be placed above the point of measurement okay so if the i is not above the measurement point what will this lead to what error will it lead to parallax parallax error why i am taking this portion again is because it is very important okay now let us see what parallax error is so parallax error is the displacement or the change okay in the apparent position of the object so basically we are taking a scale now they telling exactly this is 1 2 3 4 5 telling you to place it at 4.3 means 1 2 look at the point this is 4 1 2 3 so here is what should be placed so you can you might be looking over here or you might be looking over here so your i should exactly be placed at 4.3 only then your reading will be exactly 4.3 so looking above or looking below or maybe there is water inside which is leading to refraction so this will lead to parallax error okay so you will say it as So what is parallax error? It is the displacement
Okay, this type of error while measuring is called as parallax error. Is this clear? Is it clear, guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma okay, uh, students, you know that I'll be ready to explain how many times you want me to explain. So, if there's anything you want me to teach again, please let me know. Okay? Um, because I can see a lot of changes in your marks now. Because there are students who started talking up now. There are students who are asking doubts now. And because of me giving all the special homework and because of you concentrating more and asking more doubts, you're able to score more. The more you ask doubts, the more you'll get to understand it better. So if you have any doubts, please ask me how much of a time you want. Okay, that is why I'm there for. All right. So now we're going to see how to measure a curved line. So we can measure a straight line and everything, but how a curved line? That's what we're going to see. So before that, just please make note of it. Okay, make note of it and let me know quickly. Don't take a lot of time. I'll be back. Just make note of it. Mommy, Advika, do you have any doubts? No, ma'am. Tarakeshwaran? Any doubts, Tarakeshwaran? No. Hello? Is ma no, ma'am. Okay, okay.
Dan non. Kemudian. Ma'am, this is Rita Jamdan. Okay. Ma'am, this is a great time done. Okay. Come on, Dan and Saya. Okay. Anybody left? Is there anybody left? I hope all of you yes, are done. Fine. Okay. No, no. Fine. So now we're gonna see how to measure curved objects. So you know there is no um separate way of measuring curved objects. Okay, so for this we use special methods. Okay, so how I'm not finished. Yeah, that's why I'm asking no so many times. You tell me no. Tell me when you're done, Tarek Eshwaran. Mama, I'm sure done. Okay. Mama, I'm done. Okay, uh, are you done? Can we go to the next part? All clear? All of you all? Yes. Nobody's left. You sure? No, ma'am. All right. Okay, so how to measure curved lines now? Okay, so you know that meter scales that we normally use, like the ruler that we use at school, or we or we have even uh, longer scales for measuring bigger objects. So all these general meter scales cannot be used to measure these curved lines. So no meter scales can be used. Okay, instead. One of the method is you can use a string or a thread. Okay. Now, for example, you want to measure a snake. Okay. You want to measure a snake, for example. Now, you just take a thread. You're going to make a knot in one end of the thread. That is going to be a point zero. All right. And you're going to place it exactly on the edge of the object. And you're going to measure it. Okay, let me keep it placing the object. Why should we place the place it on top of the object to avoid what? Why should we place it on top zero of the object? Error. Exactly, to avoid zero error. Okay, we can't keep it away anywhere in the air. It's going to make an error. Now you're going to just place the thread. And you know that it ends here. You're going to cut the thread off here. Okay, so after you, you're done measuring the snake like this, 
you're going to take a scale you're going to take a scale and you're going to take this thread now again you're going to place it on top of the scale to avoid zero error i'm making thread blue okay to differentiate you're going to measure it you know that it comes till there till here so you will check it from here it is seven meter long okay or two meter long or three meter long okay this is how you will measure it this is another second method so this is the first method is it clear yes okay. there are scales which you can bend can anyone tell me what that is rubber scale <laughs> not rubber scale rubber scale to also it is very short only ma'am the measuring tape. measuring tape very good so another method that you can use is measuring tape so this so you can directly you can uh, do it you need not you need not do double work okay so measuring tape is the easiest and the most quickest way okay so these tapes are used to measure like for example the snake or to measure any uh, clothing for any animal or the girth of a tree girth means the branch the branch of a tree you know it's all bent so for all these reasons you use curved threads for measuring it or measuring tapes am i clear from whatever knowledge you understood now please make notes and tell me when you're done guys if there's any doubt please ask me Then, okay. I'm done. Okay. Ah, ma'am, I'm done. I'm showing you. Okay. Ma'am, this is the time that. Okay. Ma'am, can I need to scroll a little bit down? There's nothing down there. Ma'am, this is expired. Okay. Okay. Anybody left? No. Okay. Tell me when you're done. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am, done. Okay, all are wrote, all are done. Can I go to the next part? Okay. Now we're going to see back to the topic where we started from, which is motion. Okay. So, what is motion? Anything in movement. Okay. But what is the definition that we saw? How do you say any object is in motion? When it changes its position with respect to time. Very good. When it changes its position with respect to time. That is the exact definition of motion. And that is when you tell an object is actually in motion or not. Okay. So when a body is moving in a straight line. Okay. Or in a straight path. Okay. First type. It's moving straight. It started in A, ending in B. Okay, so the path is linear. Okay, linear path means straight path. Okay, this type of motion is called as rectilinear motion. Okay, so for example, you're taking a coin and you're rolling a coin in a straight path. Or you're dropping a coin from top of a building. It will fall straight only. Okay. Or a person running in a straight path in a race. So all this is rectilinear motion. A car moving in a straight road. Rectilinear motion. Okay. Now, when an object follows a circular path. So it is starting at A and it's ending at A. Okay, so it is a circular path. Then it is called as a what motion? Circular. Circular motion. Okay, when an object moves to and fro, front and back. Okay, like for example, take a pendulum. You know a pendulum moves, come back to its position. Again moves, come back to its position. So this is called a to and fro movement. Okay, so when an object moves to and fro. Give me another example of to and fro movement. Let me see how creative you all are. Give me another example of going to a position, coming back to the same position. Mom, in the TV, they will show like... Uh, um, they will be in their move only like... Uh, They'll keep a ball and they'll rotate it sideways. That one. In TV? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Okay. Another example? Ma'am, and the clock, in the olden days clock, um, the string and the like ball that's stuck on the string. That only, I, that only I drew, no? This is called a pendulum. Ma'am, the swing. It, uh, the swing. Dog. Exactly. Very good. So if you're moving a swing in a particular speed, you're not changing the speed at all, means a swing will go to and fro in the same position. Excellent. Okay, tell me more. Tell me examples like this. Yeah. 
you're rolling a chapati how you'll roll a chapati to and fro movement again right that is another example what else can you say in urugu मैम कोस मैम और हैंड वी कैन रोटेट इट लाइक दैट ओके व्हाट डिड समवन एल्स इट ऑस्कुलेटरी समथिंग व्हाट इज दैट ऑस्कुलेटरी मोशन व्हाट इज ऑस्कुलेटरी मोशन Mm. Telling the word, you should be able to tell me what it is, right? Two and four movement. Two and four. Who is this answering right now? Ashwat. Okay. Two and four movement is also called as oscillatory motion, not oscillatory. It's called. oscillatory motion oscillatory motion or you call it as periodic motion okay so these are the main three types of motion am i clear all of you all yes ma'am is there any doubts do you want more examples ma'am yes. tarakeshwaran did you understand what i just taught you advika yes ma'am i understood okay now let's talk about another portion of motion shri tej can you repeat what is motion definition Yes, ma'am. Uh, motion when it changes its position with respect to time. So when an object changes its position with respect to time. So we saw one part of the definition, which is motion, and what are the types of it. Now we are going to talk about time because it is moving in respect to time. So time is the unit. that measures how long it takes to do anything okay so what is actually time it is any unit that describes how long you get to do anything how long you have slept how long you have done your homework how long you have been writing the test how long it took you to reach the school okay so it is the unit that measures how long it takes to do anything okay when with respect to time only distance is calculated okay why with respect to time the distance is calculated is now for example you are having your home here you are having your school here, or you are having a hospital here this is 5 kilometers far away you are using a scooter to go okay when person a can my take 15 minutes to reach whereas person b might take 30 minutes to reach but the distance covered is the same right same 5 kilometers only but why are they taking different different time why is it because of because of one unit what is that time speed oh. Speed, very good. Ma'am, it also depends how fast they go. That is only speed. Okay, so distance, speed, 
and time of doing something is always connected with each other okay so distance are you calculating how much speed that they did like how long now let's just calculate the speed of a one minute guys just give me one minute yeah okay now you're going to find the speed of a okay how will you find the speed of a so speed formula this is something you have to remember it's very important speed is equals to distance divided by time all right or you can write it as s is equals to d by t this is very very important formula this is going to be coming not only in this grade but also for your 7th 8th 9th and upcoming classes okay so now speed of a tarakeshwaran can you solve this problem how will you find the speed of a so speed of a will be distance of a by time of a now tell me what is distance of a and time of a tarakeshwaran tarakeshwaran hey, can you be a bit more louder yeah can you solve this problem Yeah, tell me what is the distance of a? Five kilometers. Time of a? Fifteen minutes. Okay. Now, how will you divide? Okay. So five ones are five, five threes are fifteen. One by three, one by one kilometer. Three minutes. We can use the unit later on. What is one by three? Man, one is for the how much distance, and then the down one is oh, for no, the time. No, no. Oh, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Okay. One by three means you have to sit and divide. One by three, you have to put. Again, it will be one zero. So almost zero point three three three. It will go on. So we'll stop with zero point three. So zero point three kilometer. Per minute. Okay. I'm solving for B also again. Okay. You all know how to do division, right? Okay. I'll do. I'll show you how I did the division first. One by three. Obviously, you can't take the digit. Directly because three is greater than one, so you'll put a point, which will add a zero over here. Three threes are nine. Subtract it, you get one. You're adding another zero over here, which brings down. Again, three threes are nine. Sorry, one. Again, it keeps on going. It keeps on repeating. Okay, so you will end up with two digits, which is. Zero point three three or zero point three. Okay, whereas this how I did is five fifteen. Can I do it? It's a greater number, right? Anybody can follow this up of how I like how I did this. Can you do this also? For the fifteen and the five one. It will 
mean negative point marking why is it going to come in negative marking it will not come in negative marking ma'am you put point and then you give a zero exactly you will put a point and then you will give a zero so 5 divided by 15 you will that a point the zero Three, cos forty-five. Again five, again zero. Can you see? Zero point three 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 only is coming. So this is the quickest way. We're ending up with the same answer only. Okay. Now y'all might come up with the question of why I did division like this. Okay, because this is one of the quickest and easiest way of dividing. Okay, and I'll tell you how to do that. Okay, now for example. I'm taking fifty by forty-five. Okay, instead of putting fifty inside and forty-five like this, this is another easy method. Okay, so there is one table which is divisible by these two. Tell me what table it is it? Five. Five. Right. So five was the fifty. Five tens are fifty. Five was the forty-five. Nine. Nine is a forty-five, which is equals to ten by nine. Now, is there any table that is divisible by divisible for both of the numbers, ten and nine? Is there any number? No. No. When you come to this point, then you will do this method. Zero point nine is the answer. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is like one of the quickest and most easiest method of doing it. Okay. Now let's calculate the speed for A B. Who wants to do the sum? Who wants to do this sum now? Someone come forward and do it. Okay. Yeah, Advika. Advika, can you solve it? Tell me, how will I write distance of Advika? Distance divided by time. Hello. Distance of B divided by time. Time of B. Hello. B. Very good. Hello. Is anybody speaking in class? Yes, ma'am. I am speaking the answer. Okay. Okay. Distance of B by time of B, which is equal to. Ma, what is the distance of B and what is the time of B? Ma, the distance is five kilometers. Time? Fifteen minutes. Time is fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes is already done, no? Look properly and tell me. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Use the method that I taught you now. What is the table that goes for both? Um, five. So thirty okay. comes in six times, and Wait. then five, five goes in one. One, five, six. One by six. Now you can do the division. What is six? Sorry, sorry. Okay. Six divided by one. What is it? Plus one. Ma'am, first we'll keep a point. Okay. And we'll keep the zero at the right side of the one, and then we'll keep one up, and then six we'll get four. Okay. 
and then uh, we have a zero. Keep a zero and then um six six up so we'll write six up and then again it will keep on going so 40 will keep on going so the answer will be 0 0.16 kilometer per minute okay very good Adhika. okay so this is how you'll be solving the problem guys okay Ma so, yes Ma yes Advika. Mango. In fifth class, in fifth class, we learned zero point one six kmph. Kmph. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay. So now, sometimes in questions, they might ask you to convert to kilometer because normally you will find the speed in the unit of kilometer per hour only. Or you can write it as km per hr. Okay, this is how you normally find it. So here it is given minutes. Okay, now let us try finding this in kilometer per hour unit. Okay, so how you will do that? Already the time is given. Time is 15 minutes. Okay, so you know that 1 hour is how many minutes? 60 minutes. So 15 minutes is how many hours? You'll have to divide what and what? Now we have to divide so 15. 60 by 15. Okay, now 15 is... go, 60 goes in 5 table. Mm -hmm. And then no, it is, what is 12, table? 12 times. Okay. And then 15 goes in 3 times. Okay. Now 3 and 12 goes in which table? 3 table. So 3 ones are 3 and then 12 goes in 3 times. 4. 3 fours are 12. I thought the table of 4. Ah, so the answer is 4 kilometer. Sorry, four. What will come? Uh, um, so Guys, one minute. My network is glitching. Just wait for one minute. My screen is visible, all of y'all. My audible. Yeah. Screen. I'm your screen. Screen is yeah. not visible. It's not visible. One minute. One minute. Okay, before we go to the next question, is it visible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, please make please make note of the sum. Then we'll go to kilometer per hour, how to convert and all. Please make note of this. I'll give you one sum as homework. I want you all to do it. Ma'am, but the distance and all these sums comes under math, right? That it comes under physics also. Motion is a physics topic. Without maths, you cannot do anything in science. Maths comes in physics, maths comes in bio, maths comes in chemistry. Everywhere. Maths comes in all. 
Yeah. Mom, will this be asked in the test? Test room. Yeah, sure. Why not? But I'll give you if I'm asking you sums, I'll definitely give you extra time. Okay, ma'am. Any doubts anybody has, please ask me. Yeah, once you're done noting on the homework and the sum, you can leave the class. Mom, I did the homework also. You noted it or you did the homework? Mom, I did the homework. <laughs> okay, send it to me. You're done and... Uh, yeah, if you're done noting on the homework and writing all the notes, you can leave the class. I'll see you the yeah, after tomorrow. Okay, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, bye. Bye. bye.
Ma'am, this is a short term. Bye, ma'am. Bye, bye. And this is a jit and then okay adrit Ma'am, this is Sreetej. I'm done. I also noted the home. Bye. I'm just noting the homework. Okay. Ma'am? Yes, sir. Bye-bye.